Welcome to this edition of Backstage Pass with Leah Chang. I'm taking you inside La Mama Experimental Theater Club's reopening of its landmark home, 74A, for the ribbon-cutting ceremony of the refurbished building located at 74A East 4th Street in the East Village. Tony, Grammy, and Emmy-winning Death of a Salesman star Andre De Shields, whose career was launched from the very stages of the old La Mama at 74A in the 70s and 80s, served as master of ceremonies for the event. The old La Mama is where Andre and I first worked together in Lonnie Carter's Gulliver in 1993. Representatives from New York City and New York State governments, which have been instrumental in providing funding and support for the three-year $24 million renovation, included DCLA Commissioner Lori Cumbo, New York City Council Member Carlina Rivera, Manhattan Borough President Mark Levine, and New York City Council Member Eric Botcher. I'm going to be using my two big tools, scissors and bell. In 1973, I came to New York and Mama was my first artistic home. And even then, Ellen Stewart, who founded the mall, was talking about the growth, the refitting of the real estate, and now it has happened. It's a dream come true. Not only has La Mama lasted forever, La Mama is now independent, owns the real estate, and continues to grow. So today we're going to cut the ribbon to show the capital program that's funding all of this. And they've invited me to come home, and I'm happy to come home and be part of this magnificent revolution, evolution.
me at you. I'm the artistic director and part of the team here at La Mama. This is a historic day for La Mama. And we are here and we have arrived at this moment because of all of you. I continue and will never forget what our founder, Ellen Stewart, said. With the energy from this block and from around the world directed towards us, honey, we don't sink. <laughs> yes, it's really hard for me not to get emotional as I see our beautiful, eclectic community <laughs> on Ellen Stewart Way yeah. as we explore for the first time our renovated spaces of La Mama's first permanent home. Yeah. These spaces are imbued with the powerful energy of the past and it will allow us to connect to people and places locally and globally, opening up the beyond the four walls of the building. That is our dream, this radical access, which we will continue to imagine and ensure that this creative home endures for this generation and future generations. Because together we can remake a world. There are so many people who have made this possible. And in particular, our managing director, Mary. <laughs> support as we strove to bring this project to this moment. Our heartfelt thanks go out to the La Mama team. tools. This is a moment that art can make a difference. This building was built in 1873 as a space for marginalized artists. That legacy continues at La Mama. And now it is my honor to introduce our amazing city officials, Department of Cultural Affairs Commissioner Laurie Cumbo, Manhattan Borough President Mark Levine, and our own city council member Carlina Rivera. Profit. Uh, a nonprofit with just a three million dollar budget has pulled off a 24 million dollar capital project. That is supposed to be mathematically impossible. It happened because La Mama inspires fanatical devotion. And I know how hard you all dug on this. I know how much effort, how much stress, how much tears were, were shed to get to this day. Uh, and man, it was worth it. It came out pretty good. It came out pretty good. This is gonna reverberate around the city. This is going to be an arts hub so unique, so interesting, so quirky, so welcoming of people of all backgrounds. 
This is going to change the arts landscape in New York City. Every penny of that $24 million was worth it. I really believe it. And it happened um, because of the legacy of Ellen. Um, it happened because of the amazing board leadership. Uh, give a big round of applause to Frank. Yeah. Uh, My buddy Don Capocha, who's also a huge force on the board as well. Um, and it happened because of the amazing staff. Uh, following the, the impossible act of Ellen, Mia, oh my God, you have really, you have really done it. You're gonna hear next from people who put a lot of money on the table to make this happen. <laughs> So you're going to have to cheer really, really hard for them because the city's Department of Cultural Affairs and the city council put millions and millions and millions into this project. So you're going to hear uh, from a moment from the city council members, the amazing Carlina Rivera, the amazing Eric Thatcher. But first, would you please give a very, very, very warm and loud welcome to the Commissioner of Cultural Affairs, my friend, the amazing Lori Combo. Black History Month. Yeah. And, her, and to celebrate the work of a bold black woman, yeah. Ellen Stewart! Yes! <laughs> to think about in 1961, the height of the civil rights movement, when assassinations of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King and Malcolm X and John F. Kennedy and the lynchings that were happening, what was happening in terms of voting rights and the Edmund Pettus Bridge, for so many people, they wanted to know what could they do. And I so honor the legacy of Ellen because we all have to do what we have to do from the different points of our passions and our talents that God gave us. And she thought in that moment to say, we need the arts. We need theater. We need spaces where we can express ourselves, where we can bring people together, where we can show other perspectives, when we can show how when we bring the diversity of all of us together, what amazing and incredible accomplishments and intersections can happen. And that's what we are seeing today. We are seeing the bold vision of a woman who probably at that time, in 1961, can you imagine a woman talking about a black woman? We need theater space, we need rehearsal space, we need dance space, but she was absolutely right. She was absolutely right. So we have to continue to support the visionaries, we have to continue to support the artists, the creatives, the thinkers, who recognize and know that while you may not understand what I'm doing right now, I am bringing us forward. She brought us forward and each and every one of you, the artistic community, all of you on this block, this creative dynamic assemblage of people, we continue to bring it together. So I just want to read on behalf of our mayor, Eric Adams. So when you hear those dollar amounts, our mayor certainly has put his money where his mouth is and made sure that La Mama was going to remain a special part of New York City's cultural fiber. So, right? So I want to thank, I want to thank Mia. You are so dynamic, taking the baton and carrying it to the next level. Mary Fulham, the managing director. Brian Carucci, board president. My good friend Don Kaposha, the vice president of the board. And I really want to applaud my sister in government, Carlina Rivera. She continues to make sure that the money comes home for this incredible organization. I had an opportunity to serve with her and she was a champion. So I'm so excited. And now you've got the awesome and dynamic borough president. He is always, Mark Levine, supporting La Mama and the arts. Whereas La Mama now has four theaters, several resident companies, seven floors of rehearsal space, a gallery, a historic archive, and an outpost in Umbria, Italy. Wow, y'all got space up in Italy? 
We find out. We're really funding y'all. Okay. It presents more than 50 productions per year and engages diverse people with free or affordable tickets and programs. The organization's longevity is a testament to its excellence and its gifted alumni have gone on to win countless awards and share the history of the arts in the five boroughs and beyond. Following a major renovation that includes a restored facade, an enlarged lobby, complete ADA accessibility, can I say that again? Complete ADA accessibility, a cafe, a dedicated community space, an open air roof terrace, a building wide data network, and two flexible acoustically separated performance venues. La Mama's flagship is poised to better serve its mission to showcase bold and inventive artists of all backgrounds. I look forward to the many ways this influential community hub will continue to inspire creative New Yorkers as we unite to hashtag get stuff done and forge a brighter, more inclusive and equitable future for all. Now, therefore, I, Eric Adams, mayor of the city of New York, do hereby proclaim Thursday, February 9th, 2023 in the city of New York as La Mama Experimental Theater Club Day! This is an anchor in this community. This isn't a place where about 60 years ago, people did not want to invest. When Ellen Stewart had this vision, this building had no flooring, no real roof, was in terrible condition, but people had a vision for this block and for this building. And to be here now to see it, the detail, the restoration, I know we are all incredibly moved but it is the programming inside that has changed the world. What they did during the pandemic in pivoting and bringing art and expressionism virtually, what they're going to do for the next 60 years. We have had 60 years of La Mama in this theater and in our lives, and we have to ensure that that mission keeps going. That's right. Okay. So in my time in the city council, in four years, we've been able to bring in about $4 million. There is a lot of need in this city, but I will tell you, the spirit of this city, how we have healed time and time after devastating circumstance, event, pandemic, movements, is through the arts. That's right. It is a part of our holistic healing collectively we can all connect through arts and culture, and La Mama is a symbol of that. So I just want to be thankful that I'm here, that we're able to celebrate and cut this ribbon with all of my colleagues and with all of you. Please support this block. It is an amazing place. And to La Mama, congratulations for another 60 years. Let's go, New York City! So I represent the west side of Manhattan, and I helped some. But this would not have happened without the leadership of my colleague, Carlina Rivera. Right. Carlina, yeah. this is gonna be such a huge part of your legacy on the city council. And I wanna give a special shout out to someone who means so much to me and someone who played a huge part in making this happen. It's my friend and constituent, Frank Carucci, the board chair. Right. Who, Frank, come here for a sec. So, <laughs> when I was uh, chief of staff to my predecessor, Corey Johnson, when he was a speaker, Frank, he called, he texted, he wrote letters, he showed up at the office, he called again, and he got the money to make this happen. Frank, thank you for all you've done for the city of New York. Thanks so much, everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, Frank Carucci. I want to just tell you it's my great honor and pleasure to welcome you all here. I know many of you have been with us from the beginning, and you're still here. Okay? I like that. Okay. But be careful, I'm liable to break out and sing a song. Uh, it's really amazing because it feel, felt like this project would never get completed. 
and it would just go on and on. And in some ways, La Mama is always a work in progress. It never stops. And when we got this building, it was the fixer-upper of all nightmares. <laughs> we got the building, and then as Colina said, we had to put a roof on it, and from there we did whatever we could to make it function, sometimes without heat, without light, violations every day for things that had to be upgraded. But now I think we've got it pretty much down pat, and it's all perfect and ready to go. So I want to firstly thank the board of directors for La Mama. We're a quiet group, we're in the background, but everybody's pitched in and did what they could and whatever they had to, to help support the whole cause. So that's important. Of course, we can never forget Ellen, because it was her vision, her beeps, her insights that set the mission for us. And we're trying to follow that uh, mission as much as we can and stay true to the original purpose, and that's what, what we believe in so, so strongly. Um, I want to thank all of you that you're here today and that you'll be with us, I think, as we continue to do things around here. But uh, one more person that I would like to recognize and introduce you to and that's my director on the board, our treasurer, who has literally overwatched and sought and scrutinized the progress on this project day by day. That's our treasurer, Donald Kaposha. Yeah. Are you guys ready to celebrate the new improved La Mama yeah. Mothership today? Yes, yes, okay. Uh, Frank, thank you very much. We have so many people to thank. Multiple administrations have supported the project over the years. Department of Cultural Affairs, New York City Council, Manhattan Borough President's Office, New York State Council on the Arts, Regional Economic Development Center, and New York State Legislature and the Dormitory of New York. In addition, uh, we want to thank our capital project manager, New York City Economic Development Corp. We're forever uh, grateful to LISC, the Local Initiative Support Council, uh, without whose support we would not have been able to really finance this job. We extend, that's largely because the city pays about 90 days after you need the money. So LISC came in and they covered that 90 day period for us, which was great. Uh, we extend our heartfelt thanks to all the foundations who contributed to the project. Ford Foundation, Howard Gilman, Gerald J. and Dorothy Friedman Foundation, Booth Ferris, New York Landmarks Conservancy, the Midler Family Foundation, Achelis Bodman, and the Curtis W. McGraw Foundation. I wanted to just go off script for a moment and give you a little, a little bit about the genesis, how the, the genesis of this project. We lost, and Mary and me and I were on the phone yesterday, we realized this, we lost uh, Ellen in 2011. The following year, we had a successor artistic director. It was not a surprise to any of us that Mia was gonna be running it from an artistic perspective. Uh, but, but I think as a board, we really felt that we needed to do, we needed to do something. Uh, to recognize Ellen's, Ellen's legacy. So we hired an architect. We did a comprehensive plan for uh, the restoration of all the buildings. We own about 90,000 square feet of, of real estate in this neighborhood. Uh, we then went to, where is she, Angela Blocker. Angela, okay. Angela was the first person, I had never met her before. I walked in with, with, with my colleagues from La Mama presented her with this plan. She had a very healthy dose of skepticism, <laughs> looking at me like, who is this guy? Right, did you ever think you'd see this day, Angela? I mean, it's, you did. Well, that, that's, that's great. Well, you know why? Because Angela was behind the scenes, major, major supporter for us. So we, so, so that was, you know, this all happened in 2012, right? So now fast forward 10 years, it's amazing. I mean, it doesn't, it feels a long time to you, Frank. It doesn't feel like 10 years to me. Uh, but here we are today. And there's a, there's a lot that could be said, but I think, what, I think what I really have to say is this project, I'm so proud because it really served two important purposes. It, it pays tribute to Ellen's legacy, without question. Um, 
And at the same time, it provides a modern platform building for our successor artistic director to execute her vision. To me, today is really the succession. I mean, we've been, it's been 10 years, but, and you've done a great job, but today this is great, because really, Mia, this is, this is yours. And, 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 you know, uh, I will only say that uh, Ellen, who I knew very well, and all of you know, it would be rolling in her grave if she knew we spent $24 million. <laughs> so many other things she would have been able to do with that money. Uh, but, uh, but you will, uh, I just want to say one more thing. Those of you who knew Ellen, you knew that Ellen never thought twice about jumping onto a plane with 20 actors, tech people, props, and going literally around the world for decades and decades, making connections for La Mama, literally around the world. Um, and today, we, we have, now we have, now Mia has the ability to reach the entire globe simultaneously, and you'll see when you get into this space how perfectly it's situated for today's world performance world anyway thank you all very much and this is where ellen stewart has made a home for us as native peoples since the 1970s when um no one was talking about native issues at all and she was there and she was also a great mentor to my mother muriel miguel of spider woman theater <laughs> I would like to acknowledge that there has been many Native peoples who have lived here and have worked here for over 500 years before colonization, when this was a great meeting place on this island of Manhattan, Manahatta, which means the island. I would like to acknowledge the Rockaway Native peoples. I would like to acknowledge the Canarsie peoples. I would like to uh, acknowledge the Lenny and Anape Muncie peoples. I would like to acknowledge the uh, great confederacy of the Haudenosaunee Nation. And I would like to acknowledge the Matinecock on Long Island and the Shinnecock Nations of New York. I would also like to acknowledge the many different indigenous peoples who have came and worked here for since 1800 and continue to contribute in their own way in the Native American experience of this urban area. Thank you very much. I'd like to introduce my daughter. Hello everyone. Thank you for that introduction, Mom. These are three generations right here. This is my grandmother and my mother. Uh, Muriel and Muriel. And uh, I'm really happy to be here today, really honored. You know, La Mama has really been a home for uh, not only our organization, Safe Harbors New York City, but for me as an artist. Um, I was an artist in residence last year. At here at La Mama, I've always been able to use space whenever I wanted to and ask Kiku, and she's always been super generous <laughs> with it. And I always have, I, oh, right, Kiku really holds it down, but you know, I always appreciate that. And so, um, you know, actually uh, I was here when we did the groundbreaking with my late father. And so the song here that I'm gonna to sing today is, um, it, it's my version of a sunrise song. It was written for a radio play by Spider Woman called Town of Little Sagas with Sonny Moreno of Ulali. And uh, this is a song that, it's in the Ho-Chunk language, which was uh, what my dad mostly sang in. And it was kind of a tribute to him. Um, the Zuni Sunrise song is a song that's well known in the Southwest. And it's a welcoming song to wake up to in the morning. And when my dad passed, I realized I didn't have permission to sing that song. So I decided to create my own version of that song in, Ho in the Ho-Chunk language. And uh, the words that I'm saying mean, thank you, red sun, thank you, yellow sun. And that is, it's a welcoming to just uh, start the day. And I think it's really good for new beginnings. And I think we're here today for a new beginning. Hey, ah, hey, oh. Zihabwi, wai ni gino 
of Janet Kagan, and I am a member of the New York State Council on the Arts, uh, also known as NISCA. And as a lifelong theater lover, as well as a producer, I am also proud to say I am a member of this um, wonderful theater community. Uh, it is especially, uh, it is an especially great honor for me to be here today on behalf of Governor Kathy Hochul, NISCA Executive Director Mara Manis, Chair Catherine Nichols, and the entire NISCA Council and staff. Please know that Mara is in Albany fighting very hard today for the arts budget <laughs> for this yes. state. Um, otherwise, she would be here flying the, the mama flag herself. Um, we at NISCA know that now, more than ever, it is vital for arts and culture to be a part of every community. Where there are arts, there are healthy people, there are jobs, and there's growth. We are proud to, be, to bring this support to this field. Um, NISCA is proud to have provided a 2020 capital grant to this phenomenal project which will ensure that the legacy of Ellen Stewart and the generations of artists that have called East 4th Street home. When we walk through these doors today, we walk into the future of our sector, the city, and the state. I'd like to acknowledge the artists and creative workers with us today for their continued creativity and resiliency. We are energized by your determination and your work which nourish the collective spirit of New York. Congratulations to Mary and the, and the entire La Mama team. Your vision for the future is vital to the advancement of this community and all of New York State, especially at this critical time of recovery. We look forward to experiencing all that takes flight here. Uh, I had a lobby to make this next introduction <laughs> because the person I'm going to introduce to you is somebody who's actually approaching legitimate and realistic legendary status. <laughs> that, of course, is our wonderful, wonderful La Mama baby, as we call him, Andre DeShields. <laughs> were lucky enough to see Andre in the recent Broadway revival of Death of the Salesman. Okay. You, 
know the stories about Willie Loman, a guy who's down and out, who can't make a living, his family's falling apart. But poor Willie has a successful older brother, Ben. And you hear Ben talking in his subconscious and saying things to Willie. And one of the things he says, Willie, when I was 18, I went into the jungle, and when I came out, I was 21 with my pockets filled with diamonds. He was an explorer or something, I guess. <laughs> well, finally, Ben makes his entrance, and he comes out on stage at Mr. DeShields in a white suit, covered in diamonds and sequins, <laughs> and everybody stood back and sat up and said, what's going on? I was sure they were going to be doing a new version of Diamonds Are a Man's Best Friend. That didn't get to happen, but I think someday it just might inside this building. <laughs> right, right, right. But you know, Frank, whenever I come on stage, people go, what's going on? <laughs> Morning world! I say good morning to the world because Ellen Stewart is the mother of world the theater. And Ellen, your children are here. They have turned out this morning because finally the La Mama Real Estate represents your vision. It is built on the past, but it's looking toward the future. When I came to New York in 1973, because someone said to me, if you can make it here, you can make it anywhere. <laughs> Ellen Stewart said to me, baby, let mama help you. <laughs> what do you want to be? I said I want to be an actor. Ellen Stewart said, forget it, baby. <laughs> La mama will make you an icon. <laughs> As Ellen Stewart has done with other icons, like Bette Midler, <laughs> like Harvey Feinstein. <laughs> like Julie Taymor, like Tom O'Horgan. The list goes on, but those are the ones you are most fami familiar with, I think. La Mama is gone, but La Mama is still here. She lives in Italy now, <laughs> where I had the opportunity to visit her. She loves us all, you know that. And it's for us to continue that love, to make sure that there's a seat for everybody at the La Mama table. Okay? I'm not gonna say any more than that because I have waited all these many years to do this. The first time I came to La Mama, and she started every ritual by ringing the bell, I thought one day I'm gonna ring that bell. That day has come. Take this mic away from me.
joining me for this edition of Backstage Pass with Leah Chang. Until next time.